How's it going, people? Welcome back. And we're going to explore the remedy. It's the last video. One of my favorite remedies. Oh, too good to chug. Mm. Just beautiful. The remedy. The potential remedy is found in Revelations 3, 18 through 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. End quote. Yeah, they, they had that one above the door at my meeting hall. I am the door. And another one in this one. On the two doors, three doors actually. One of them didn't have a placard above it. But anyway, that was a placard on one of their doors of my old meeting hall that I used to go to. All right. It sets the stage for change. That knock at the door. Someone's always approaching. Knocking at the door, just spamming you. <laughs> this is spiritual spam, high quality stuff. <clears throat> the remedy is found in presenting pure gold to the lukewarm. Oh, by the way, by Lacuni, gold, end quote, after the Lacuni. <laughs> and then there's a slash. The divine Son of God and the blessed Holy Spirit are depicted as gold. So that's their commentary on those two words that they actually used. <clears throat> White raiment denotes purity and uprightness. In the changed person's life and I self and I self okay uh, is for spiritual vision. So, get your vision corrected. Start seeing the world in a totally different way. And a lot easier that way. Or is it? To do the will of God as found in the scriptures. I salve enables a person to see the doctrinal truths of the New Testament. That's what you need. <sighs> I solve. <clears throat> In John 3.3, 3, Jesus said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In quotes. He cannot enter, italicized, the kingdom, nor grasp kingdom issues. The casual person might be telling you the truth when he says, he might be, I see nothing wrong with this or that. Pretty casual. Or, might say this. I don't see it that way. They could say that. Ah, the remedy? Pray tell. He shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your wonder which organ. Oh, heart. 
And that's Jeremiah 29, 13. <laughs> hey, you! My favorite critter. Next to Loki, of course. <sighs> Present your bodies a living sacrifice, it quotes. And, new quotes, <coughs> be, not be not conformed to this world. Terra firma, the temporal plane. You know, the real part of reality. <sighs> but, be ye transformed and that's from you know been snipped from Romans 12 1 and 2 that was useful to them at that time transformed means changed from the inside out at least figuratively speaking right not necessarily medically speaking so wouldn't that be awesome, man? <laughs> Reset. Perfect health. I'd be up for that. <sighs> Reach out to the casual ones, but do not allow them to influence you. <laughs> Find ways to be kind and loving. We appreciate that. They at times will feel very depressed or become fearful and sad. Reach out to them in love. On the surface, casual people are very happy and some are even loud and exuberant. But during their quiet times, they have nothing solid to rely upon. They become sad and sometimes even bitter against true Christians. Jealous. They're jelly. <sighs> Show them out of deep concern the meaning of the violent take the kingdom it's, you know, by force Matthew 11 12 uh, they need such a reverential fear of God that they become desperate to please God and to enter his kingdom at all cost in true repentance and obedient discipleship The remedy must include 1 Timothy 6, 3, and 5, which refers to those who teach otherwise and convert not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the doctrine which is according to God. Being proud, knowing nothing, but, but doting about questions and strifes of words. Wherefore cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposed that gain is godliness. And that was all in italics, by the way. And now they're out of the italics, with a little quote colon there. For such 
withdraw thyself, end quote. I guess that was the whole Second Timothy thing, or one of those. Um, oh, so that's really useful. Just asking. I was forming that as a question. <sighs> also consider Second Thessalonians three six. Now. We command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which be received of us. Let's do them a, the favor of withdrawing ourselves. Appreciate. A casual a casual, lukewarm person. That'd be a good name, you know, for a soap opera character. I'm lukewarm. <laughs> Is deceived. He or she needs help and should be expelled from the church for not responding rightly to truth. I see, that's really good to know. The scriptures teach us the true church to keep a clean compan uh, wait, uh, keep a clean communion. Casual people sh should not be served communion until they repent. ministry of the church will be held accountable for unclean communion. Hey you, that's mine. Can't have that. <sighs> the ministry of the church will be held accountable for unclean communion and the church will suffer. Clean communion is part of the remedy of the 21st century casual Christianity crisis. You know, I've witnessed that as a kid. They did a meeting hall uh, to somebody, and it was really tough to see where they passed the collection plate through, but the bread and the wine, and it was Manischewitz. <laughs> Should have used Ripple, but... Um, They'd pass it all the way up to just before this one person that they were shunning at the church. I, I saw this because it was in front. And they'd pass it all the way back, then to the row behind her, and then up all the way up to her. I mean, yeah, I witnessed that, and I watched this person just fall apart. And I heard later on she was on her knees begging the patriarchs to cut her some slack. By the way, years later we found out her husband was gay and a pillar of the church. And a great guy, good singing voice. <laughs> Casual people should not be served communion until they repent. The ministry of the church will be held accountable for unclean communion and the church will suffer. Clean communion is part of the remedy of the 21st century casual Christian crisis. We're caught up. The remedy is found in assisting these people to open the door when Jesus is knocking. Haven't heard any knocking lately. Then again, I don't usually answer the door when someone's knocking, so. Uh, but he walks through locked doors and walls anyway, right? Which is why they had to move the stone to let them get out. <laughs> uh, God knocks when there are reverses such as sickness, accident, or death. Jesus also knocks during the 
invitation at the end of a message at church. Through New Testament preaching, The foolishness of preaching. That's all they needed out of that one. <laughs> Some are saved. That was a quote from somewhere over there. But uh, God is knocking when loving discipline is brought upon an erring member. Jesus stands patiently knocking. Long-suffering, isn't he? We too are this are serious about the Christian life, about the church, the wholesome church life, about the Christian home and school, and about a consistent witness going out. We'll knock on doors, literally. In the temporal room, you know, world, you know, they need volunteers. Or at least initiates. <sighs> Some kind of technical problem there. I'm going to skip ahead because we probably missed some of this. I don't know, I had a technical problem earlier. Uh, we too, who are serious about the Christian life, about the church, and wholesome Christian life, about the Christian home and school, and about a consistent witness going out, will knock on doors literally. The New Testament brings a person to a sense of his accountability before God and a realization of his lost condition before God. Thus, the individual can repent, and God can forgive his sins. The repentant dies to self. That sweet surrender. And God quickens him with newness of life. The quickening. Many will be called few chosen. So applied right now. A preemptive remedy for casualness is established as parents teach their children the ways of truth and give them a disciplined and orderly lifestyle with very early accountability to their parents, teachers, and ministry. Children must be helped to <laughs> no. <laughs> and ad living there. Discern early what is right and to know about the consequences of disobedience. Corrective measures will establish the heart, mind, and emotions of the child. Get them while they're young. At the age of accountability, the young adolescent must have a change of heart. A personal Pentecost. And then he is to live a... <laughs> What's up? <laughs> hey. Nice greeting, everybody. I was making a video, but I can continue later. What's up? Oh, nothing much. Who knows? This might end up in there if it's. <laughs> yeah, I've been visiting with these guys all the morning. Yeah, I kept on calling. I didn't know where they were headed off to. Figure they come over and visit. <laughs> I do. Welcome back. 
had to take a little break for inter you know an intermission there. Neighbor dropped by and time got lost in a good way. Where was I? Uh, corrective measures will establish the heart, mind, and emotions of the child. At the age of accountability, the young adolescent must have a change of heart. A personal Pentecost. And then he is to live a life of service under the blessings of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that New Testament corrective measure upon the heart of our young ones prevents casualness and brings out the obedience that will be lasting throughout life and fixed in eternity. And I'm not even done with Remedy, but they did give me a pause. So, I'm going to pause until next time. Let me know what you've learned so far. Uh, please stay tuned. More material to come. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having.